Hi friends, it's Denise from Lumahead.com and this time we're making a baby blanket. So I chose a 24 peg loom, but you can use any loom that has at least 24 pegs. I like the little ones because they fit in my bag and I can take my project with me. Very important, I need you to watch the video completely before you start this project. All right, let's begin. So I'm gonna be using two strands of worsted weight yarn as one, but you could use one strand of chunky. And I'm going to go ahead and make a knot and secure the yarn to the anchor peg so that I can wrap every one of those 24 pegs. Remember that it doesn't matter the shape of your loom, so it can be round or long, it doesn't matter as long as you wrap your 24 pegs. And then we're gonna turn direction. And at this point, we're gonna be doing the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. So let's tell you what a U-wrap is. It basically means that you're going to half wrap the peg. And you're gonna take that bottom loop over your top. That's called a knit off. And you're just gonna repeat that one peg at a time. You're going to half wrap, take the bottom loop over the top, which is also called a knit off until you get all the way back to that first peg that you wrapped. And when you've done that, well, guess what? Your cast on is done and you're ready for row one where we're gonna purl the whole roll. You're gonna skip that first peg and we're coming over here to the second peg. That's where we're gonna start the purl. Now you're gonna pull on it that first one a little bit only because you're gonna tighten this. It's kind of loose right here. Um, so you pull on it and over here as well to tighten that first stitch. And then you're gonna take your hook and with that you're gonna scoop up the working yarn, create a new loop. You're gonna take the old one off, put the new one on and you're gonna pull. Again, you're gonna take your working yarn and put it under that loop with the hook. You're gonna scoop up the working yarn and create a new loop. There it is right there. And then you're going to take off the old loop, put the new loop on and pull on your working yarn. And that is again, your purl stitch. And so you're gonna to continue to do that all the way around. And you're gonna do this for 22 pegs. So remember you skipped the first one. You're going to continue to knit 22 of them, which leaves you one last peg. And what I want you to do with that last peg, always on the purl, is to knit. You're going to U-wrap knit that last stitch on every purl, and then we're going to go ahead and do row two, where we're gonna knit using an E-wrap version of a knit stitch. So again, we're turning directions and we're gonna skip the first peg, and then we're gonna wrap all of the pegs. And because you skipped one, you only have 23 more to go. And so you're gonna wrap those 23 pegs. When you're done wrapping all of your pegs, you're then going to go to the next part of the E-wrap and that is the knit off. You go to the second peg and you're gonna pull on this one extra hard to tighten that loop right there. And you can do that on the next two pegs. And then you could just knit off regular. Um, remember to remove the knot from the anchor peg uh, because it won't be a good idea to continue knitting with it still on. You're now going to repeat rows one and two, which are a row of purl and a row of knit for approximately 100 rows. Make sure that your last row is a purl row. Now I say approximately 100 rows because what you want is for this color to be half your length. So it could be that you need more or less than 100 rows to get to half the size of your project. So just knit until you get half the length and then we're going to change colors. If you want to, this is optional, you don't have to. To change colors, you're gonna cut the working yarn and this is really easy. All you're gonna do is bring in the next color and you're gonna make a knot with all four strands. 
the two strands from the old color and the two strands from the new color. You want to focus on keeping your knot as close to the peg as possible and you want to go ahead and do two um, knots just to make sure that your uh, yarn is secure. It's not necessary, it's optional, but it's a good idea. And as always, you're going to skip that first peg and then you're going to start wrapping your pegs because this first row with your new color is going to be an e-wrap knit stitch. Just like you did with your first color, with your new color you're going to knit rows 1 and 2 for approximately 100 rows. Alright guys, so I'm going to show you something super cool that you're going to really like because I like it a lot. And I call it a length indicator and I attach it to my peg right here. And basically what it is is the length that I want my project to be. I put a little knot at the end and I just keep knitting and knitting and knitting until I get to this length. And that way I don't have to worry if I did too many or not enough rows. All right, and just to remind you of the pattern, row one is a purl for the whole row, and row two is a knit the whole row. And just continue that until, like me, your project is the length of your length indicator. See? Here you'll see that I already know I can stop right here and I don't need to knit anymore because it's time for me to bind off or in other words cast off. Okay let's review the basic bind off. It's done over two pegs and you wrap peg two, knit off, take that loop and move it to peg one, tighten it, you're going to knit off and then you're going to take that loop from peg one and you're going to move it over to peg two. Now, when you get to this peg, you're going to modify that basic bind off. You're modifying on peg 2, peg 12, and peg 23. So to modify, you're going to wrap pegs 1 and 2. Remember last time we only did 2. You're going to knit off both pegs. And then again, you're going to take the loop from peg 2. You're going to move it to peg 1. And then you're going to knit off and you're moving that loop from peg 1 over to peg 2. Until you get to peg 12, you're going to continue with that basic bind off. So you're going to wrap peg 2, move that loop to peg 1, knit off, and then you're going to move that loop from peg 1 to peg 2. Let's do it again because it's good to see stuff a few times, right? Wrap peg 2, knit off, move the loop from peg 1 to peg 2, and then you're going to knit off. By the way, I tighten my loop, and then I'm going to move that loop from 1 over to peg 2. And I keep saying peg 1 and 2 because this is done over two pegs. And now, like I said before, all of the other ones are done. This is 1, and then we modified here at peg 2 and then we're going to keep going and like I said before we're going to modify when we get to peg 12 which is for me half my loom and sorry that my phone is going off I'm really popular today when we get here we're going to modify this technique again by wrapping both pegs 1 and peg 2 and then you knit off both pegs you take the loop from peg 2 and you're going to move it over to peg one and I tighten here it just makes it easier for me even though I'm going to take the loop off you knit off and then you take the loop off of peg one and you move it over to peg two and you tighten and then you're going to keep on going and you're going to continue to do this until you reach um, peg three and sorry if I kind of got a little confused before but remember that we're going from the last peg 
back to the front of the loom. So you modify this loom three times. And remember when I say modify, it means that you're wrapping both pegs one and two. The regular one is this one where you wrap peg two only. You move it to peg one, you tighten, you knit off, and then you move that loop from peg one over to peg two. This is now, peg two now is your new peg one. And now here you're going to modify for the last time. You're wrapping both pegs and you're going to knit off both pegs. Then you're gonna move it, right? You're gonna move your loop from this peg to this one. And you're gonna tighten and knit off and move that loop back over again, all right? That was your last one and now you're just gonna do your basic bind off which is where you only knit two and move it over, tighten and knit off and you finish your bind off and now all you need to do is you're gonna create a really long, long tail because you're gonna need it to sew. So you're gonna take this measure, this working yarn and you're gonna measure out two and a half times the length of your blanket so that you have enough um, thread to sew and then you're gonna cut. So I'm showing you this because I want you to see how I'm pulling two strands at the same time. I'm doing it from the side and from the top. And once I've done my measurement, more or less, doesn't have to be exact, um, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut my working yarn. There we go, see? And now I'm going to take that loop, this last loop, and I'm gonna pull it out. And it's a long piece of yarn so it's gonna be a while. Now you could sit back and look at how cool that edge turned out. And if you've done them correctly, your beginning and your end will match up. I did tighten up my uh, cast on and I'll give you a link to that video in the description. Now all you have to do is make three more panels just like the first one and then we can go on to sewing. When you come to the sewing part, I do suggest either using some locking stitch markers or safety pins in order to align the panels. Some of them might turn out a little shorter, a little longer, don't worry, you could stretch out your squares in order to line them up. Now in order to keep that loose working yarn in order, I wrap it up in this little ball. And uh, when I'm ready to sew, I just unravel that little ball and thread the needle. Now we're gonna do an invisible stitch, which is sometimes also called the mattress stitch, but this is not the mattress stitch. So I want you to pay attention because it's a bit different. First thing you're gonna do is find your corners and you're gonna take your working yarn and you're gonna feed it through that opposite panel and go ahead and feed it through. Now it can be a little cumbersome because it's really long. And then you want to come back to your original panel. Of course, you can always remove your safety pin first or locking stitch marker, whatever you're gonna call it. Um, to make it easier and again so uh, back to the original panel and this basically gives you your first alignment so that those two look nice and square and we're going to take those two uh, pieces of working yarn from the two panels and sew them together and that's going to secure uh, your first stitch and I like to make two knots. You don't have to and if you have another way of connecting your panels at the beginning that's fine that's up to you. Now we're going to take the needle and we're going to feed it through what I call a ladder. It's sometimes called a cross stitch I believe on the edge of the fabric and that's your first one on your original panel. You're going to come over 
and find one on your other side and um, you know my thread was so long my working yarn was so long and it got a little crazy don't panic don't worry about it slowly you know you're gonna feed it through and it's gonna be like this at the beginning a little bit every now and then all right now you're gonna go back to that original stitch the same one on the other side and up to the next ladder and feed your working yarn through it and again come back to the other side find the original stitch and you're going to find the ladder that goes right above it and feed your needle through uh, that cross stitch and you're going to do the same always looking for the last stitch and go right through that same one and up to the next ladder all right and you're going to continue sewing in that manner Every now and then you're going to take your working yarn and pull it to tighten and see how cool it looks on this side and the other side that does not happen with the mattress stitch. One side will look really cool and the other one will look bulky. So I think you'll appreciate this stitch a little bit more. Just continue. Okay, so I've reached the end of this first panel and the first thing I wanna do is make sure that my working yarn is on the very tip of the panel so that I can connect them nicely and finish up the last few rows of, um, of stitches. Um, and then we wanna make sure that we feed the working yarn through the very tip of both ends and you're going to end up uh, at this point because you're coming from one edge to the other you're going to end up with three pieces of working yarn and so you're going to take first the ones that are on the tip of the panels and make some knots then just make a knot uh, with one of the tips and the working yarn that you were sewing with and that's good enough and see that's how it looks on the edge on both sides and now we're going to weave in um, the working yarn and just try to make sure that when you're doing this you're doing it on the side that has the same color so all of them will have uh, some working yarn that's left over that needs that you need to weave in again just make sure that you're doing it on the side that's the same color once you've reached a certain point where you feel comfortable then you could just get your scissors and cut that working yarn and it will be virtually invisible. If you don't want to use your um, your needle, you can just use a crochet hook like I'm doing here and feed, uh, weave in your ends using a crochet hook. Either one will be fine. I tend to like the needle if that's you know if it's available and as you can see it looks nice now again on both sides which I love that so say you run out of yarn while you're sewing let me show you what you can do you're going to get some working yarn and thread your needle and you're going to take that needle and you're going to feed it through the stitch where you left off and pull it until you reach the edge 
and you're gonna take that edge of your new yarn with the one that was left over and you're going to make a knot. Now all you have to do is continue sewing where you left off with your new piece of yarn. With what's left over, all you're gonna do is weave in the end. Let me give you another scenario. So your edges don't have any working yarn. You're just gonna get two strands and work with them as though they are one and you're going to feed that working yarn through the two tips of your panel. Just feed them right through that long piece of working yarn, okay? And then with that one uh, set, you're going to make a knot in order to secure the working yarn. And then you're just gonna keep sewing just like you did when you did have working yarn on the tip of one of your panels. No different. And that's it, just keep sewing. And sew your four panels together to make your nice little blanket and it will look like this all lined up, nicely sewn together. Remember you can make this the size of the planet, just keep adding panels. Well, hope you like it. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.